Hey, everybody. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We are, we are finally home from everywhere. Everybody traveled except for this person. If you don't know who this is, it's Jelaine Smith. Uh, but we traveled. We were in Salt Lake City and, and Betsy was in New York and Ooh, we're tired. Our hands are, our wings are tired. Yeah, from all that that was a lot of flying. <laughs> some yes. of us flew home easily. Some of us did not. Some of us have yes. slept like forever. Once we get home, I find we, uh, Roots Tech very, very tiring. Were you tired, Greg? I was tired. Yeah, I, yeah. I, was, I was very tired. You have to be on, right? You're uh, on. Yeah. You to, you're not just present. You have to be on. Yeah. And now for me, Six in the morning I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, That, that charges me up. <laughs> but still yeah yeah we i've got a, a statement to make about my good friend greg when we get to things <laughs> hey everybody we're so glad you're here and greg is wearing a tie yes he is yes, greg I is am. a little overdressed no he's not because greg has to go and play go play for, for a, funeral. a funeral so this he's morning. not overdressed right. at all um i question I the red tie a, it it's should orange. be a black tie for a funeral and b orange for wiki tree <laughs> Well, to me, so it Julie, looks orange. Julie, Julie, <laughs> get him an orange tie. I do. I have one orange tie, but it's full of pumpkins, and I didn't think that was appropriate for your funeral. True. No, 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 no. Okay, so good morning. I, we're going to start off this morning not doing the question of the week. We're going to go first off to Jelaine. Now, I don't know if you guys remember that six months or so ago, she was on the live cast because she had discovered this incredible. Uh, she made this connection. Okay, so I'm going to pull up the information and I'm going to let her tell us, uh, yeah. recap what the uh, information yeah. is that we are going to talk about. Uh -oh. Sure. Okay, there we go. Recap it and um, I'll keep up with you with um, okay. the screen. Um, so um, Mags is sharing a free space page that I created last August after I'd been contacted by a woman in North Carolina who had uh, discovered a box of photographs in a roadside ditch. The woman who found them it turned out to be a genealogist and she was horrified at the loss of the potential loss of these photographs. She rescued them, took them home, cleaned them up, dried them out in her oven. And, <laughs> and then she started, she noticed, wow, there's actually notations on the back. And to help to start to identify uh, people, she started researching and Googling those names. And she found me on Wikitree because I have had this longstanding research project to uh, document the descendants of Schwenningen Germany families who emigrated to the United States in the mid 1800s, including my own ancestor. And one of those branches was Thomas Yauch and his wife, Katarina Schlenker. And they ended up in Stanton, Virginia. And um, it turns out that these photographs were uh, from that family, including if you scroll down a little bit more, Max, that first, the first one there, those two, that is the emigrating couple. And it's very exciting. This is, you know, the woman died in 1875. So that photograph had to have been taken before then. Um, this is the uncle of my ancestor, Ludwig Yauk. So this is Thomas Yauk. Um, anyway, so I got, she sent, this woman sent me the box of photographs. I then started creating profiles for each of these family members, if I didn't have them already, and adding the photographs, um, digitizing them, scanning the photographs and putting labels on them, as you're seeing here, that's their daughter, the she was actually born in Germany, but she she married a Pifferling who then married a Labonte. <laughs> and uh, anyway, one of the descendants um, created, uh, you know, had these photographs. And um, so I created this page. And if Mag scrolls down closer to the bottom, it says that um, I am looking for living descendants. Um so yeah, I did, organized it by generation. There you go. Finding current family. I was hoping that th I could find the, uh, yeah, <laughs> the uh, living descendants. I did enough research to identify um, 
three people that I thought were living, one of whom I subsequently learned died, and I think was the owner of the photographs because she died in North Carolina near where the photographs were found. Uh, and I said, I'm looking for the, for the granddaughters. Six months later, one of the granddaughters um, um, found me. She found this. She was Googling. She was Googling her family, Labonte and Pifferling. And I don't think, I don't know how much she knew about the Yowks, but, um, and she found this page and she reached out to me and I got to, I got to get moved to even talking about it. <laughs> and it's been a couple months now. Um, she Googled or she reached me through private message and she said, I'm the granddaughter. Um, and there she is, she gave us permission to share this photograph that is her in the blue dress with the white hair, her husband and their two daughters. Um, and she gave me permission to share the photograph. And so she reached out to me and said, I, I, I'd love to have the photos. So I finally put them all back together in a box and, and I added, um, I added some additional information, um, I added a printout of this to go with the photographs, uh, the printout of this page. I also with, this is the nice postscript part. So six months ago when I was on YouTube here, the, this with you all, Greg recognized the Labonte side and he's got Labontes in his, in his uh, uh, family. And th that, I know nothing about the Labontes. They married into my line, the line I'm related to. <laughs> No, oh, yours line married into mine. <laughs> oh, Bonnie's married into yours. Okay, same thing. Got it, got it. Sorry, I got it wrong. Um, but you started working on it, and as a result, you got the line back several generations, and then even later, you did connect them with yeah. the Levants you noticed, and including the um, the emigrating ancestor. Um, and the Labonte family, the woman who reached out to me, she didn't, they didn't have that information before. Mm -hmm. So I, I also printed out the pedigree for um, the Labontes and included that and shipped it off to her. She got it about a week later. I invited her to join us, but she's for other reasons, not able to join us today. But I just think this is such a great example of collaboration of the value of putting this kind of page up on WikiTree. Um, you know, if, even if your research is in progress, uh, even if you don't have all the answers yet, to put something like this up there and someone who was Googling their family and found me. And as a result, I returned these precious photographs to, uh, to the family. Um, and I, I like that the Fifferling Looks Pifferling. Like they pronounce it Piffer. I thought it was Fifferling as well, but it's actually pronounced Pifferling, even it's though it's got that F which, in the which sounds like pilfering. Pilfering. <laughs> you know, you're you're pilfering their photos. <laughs> and, and that just goes to show A that WikiTree is incredibly collaborative because you got here, you got on, we talked about it, we got the you got the free space up, Greg got involved, he collaborated. But another really important part about Wikitree that people often don't realize until they're on Wikitree, and I say this all the time, I could name the number of people that I met as cousins before I started Wikitree on one hand. And since then, it's, it's exploded because Wikitree has such good search engine optimization that somebody who types in pif 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 Piffering and Labonte, they're going to pop up. WikiTree yeah. is going to be the first mm -hmm. first answer in that that information. So that's great. Uh, I was trying to stalk one of the posters in G2G to G today to try and figure out what somebody's first name was. And I couldn't get far because I kept putting in the information for his grandfather and it kept popping up. WikiTree was the first one and I couldn't find any more information. So <laughs> I stopped stalking. That is such a great story, Jelaine. Isn't it? Isn't that's it? So excellent. you haven't put up... A free space page about something you're working on, you know, and, and or you're trying to reach, you're trying to reach family members, uh, distant family members or close ones, uh, you know, a free space page could be the way to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the free space page, you know, that comes up, that pops up because of that search engine optimization. Thank you so much for coming on. You can hang out and mm -hmm. be uh, 
uh, you can have some M&M's M &M, M &M's in this. <laughs> and hang out with us while we continue our morning. Uh, uh, you can drop off or do whatever you'd like. I will hang out, but uh, off video. So I don't know how you kick me uh, the video part off. I will hang out. In the no, chat. no. If, if you're staying on, you got to stay on video too. Oh, <laughs> no, we'll, we'll, we, we can take you off. There you go. There you All go. right. So um, good morning, everybody. Morning. Uh, morning. Hey. Here. Uh, everybody is here. Um, Susie Carta, Mary Sleppy, Chris Ferriello, D. Um, somebody who is it? D. Are you from James Brown's area of the world down in Augusta? Ooh. I feel good, dude. <laughs> um, let's see, Jim Butka, uh, Janine, all you wonderful people. Hey, Appalachian roots people, love you. Uh, no, not white, white chocolate, rice, white, white. They have white chocolate M&Ms now. I haven't seen those. Ooh. Hey, J.R.E. from Northern Alberta. I have family in Fort McMurray. All right, Ooh. cool. On the Goog foot, D. Goog, you're going to take over my uh, typist, uh, <laughs> queen of typos, if, you want, if you're not careful. <laughs> and she's, she's yelling, good at me. See, good. <laughs> Um, yeah, so the question of the week, let me uh, share my screen again. Uh, let me remove that one and reshare, present. They've changed the way we do things a bit on, uh, wait, that didn't work. Share screen, there we go. I don't want to go to question of the week, except I don't want to be on that page. I want to be on this page. Got the right page up. Yep. Nope. You have to hit. Do you want me to add it? Nope. You got it. Nope. You, got you just it. deleted it again. <laughs> I hope this is the right one. Yeah, there we go. Oh. Oh. You just. Betsy, what'd you do? What did I, I don't know what I did. Betsy. <laughs> I don't think she did anything. Question of the week. Now, I'm going to run through this pretty quickly. Uh, question of the week is what's your most embarrassing genealogical mm. mistake? Uh, and I want to do what I normally do, which is skip between pages. Can I still do that? No. See, I don't like the new thing that they've done. Uh -oh. All right. Because, all right, I had things set up. Why can't I do that anymore? Did you not share your entire screen? No, it won't let me. It only oh. gave me. Oh, there we go. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> it's exciting when you discover something. <laughs> <laughs> it is. All right. So, K. Smith. Uh, I like this as the first, it was the first answer, well, the second answer. But he tells a story about how instead of reading reading directions, he's a man, of course. <laughs> he, he, just, he, he went skiing once and he just took off. And he just took off down slopes he shouldn't have been going down. And, of course, he learned his lesson. So uh, don't assume you know how to wiki tree because you already know who your grandparents' grandparents were. Add some profiles and look around. Ask questions. Ask for help. Look at questions uh, that have already been asked. Get familiar with your surroundings. Your hobby will be much more enjoyable. Now, he didn't break his leg, but he could have on the ski slope because he just dove in. So uh, that's a that's a good one. Um, I'm going to jump over to the next screen. Here we go. That works. Uh, one time I proposed a merge of two children in one family. The PM rejected it because they were twins. Huh. So I respected Acadian researcher. And so Cindy Cooper was incredibly embarrassed. Um, and then Leaf gets in here and says, hey, you can add the multiple births template. And that's how you format it right here. If you've got twins in a family, you can absolutely identify them with this information. So uh, a good learning experience there. Uh, I'm going to jump on over to not Betsy. Okay, there we go. I'm going to jump on over to the next tab. Can I ask a question, Mates? So yeah. well, there's a multiple birth template, but not a sticker. Because I was I was doing a profile with where there were twins in the family, and I was looking and looking for a sticker because it seemed like there should be one. And I guess yeah, the like, stickers and the templates are some are different type things. Yeah. Okay. So it's not like a project box template. 
Um, so there's templates that you can use for estimated date and it goes across the very top of the profile. So it's obvious instead of a sticker, which belongs down in the bio section. So there, there are templates that you can use. And if you go to the templates, you can see the ones that are approved for you for use. Did I Thanks. answer your question? All yes. Right, cool. uh, let's see. I merged. This is for Marion Saruti. Uh, I merged two profiles for individuals who were not the same person. Benjamin Cleveland Higgs and Cleveland Benjamin Higgs. <laughs> Their names were similar, but not the same. Do you remember the, mm. the Sesame Street? These things are similar, but they're not the same. Um, so much of the data were not the same, but I wanted them to be the same, even though they weren't. So, okay. She got rescued, and now in retrospect, this seems to have been uh, more of an educational experience. Yeah. If you never make a mistake, you never you learn. learn. Okay? There you go. Yep. Yep. I'm going to jump on to the last one here. Uh, which is cool. Um, Brian Nash, if you haven't had an opportunity to check it out, Brian is also our member of the week. Um, so this is a really cool story. I love Brian's stories. Uh, no mistakes should be embarrassing. We all make them. They should just be uh, an, a learning experience, just like what we said. Uh, that being said, I've been known to make them. I think I recounted last year when this question was asked, I explained how when reading the Halifax McAlpin directory, I saw that my second great grandfather was listed as a cordial manufacturer. Mm -hmm. And for about a year, I was not cluing in and just found it interesting that they recognized his politeness. <laughs> now, if you know Brian, you know that he's a fairly polite guy. It must be in his genes. Uh, I thought this for maybe a year, maybe a little more, uh, despite the fact that I saw an ad for my uncle's ginger ale in the same directory. Thomas Nash, manufacturer of Belfast ginger ale. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Ginger ale and soda water factory. Uh, I knew my great uh, third great grandfather owned one of the first soda manufacturers in Nova Scotia. There you go. One of those buildings is it. Let John Nash and Company written across the front. That reminds me of the Guinness Company there on the river mm -hmm. in Dublin. You can see the building like that. Uh, so really, it wasn't much of a genealogical mistake, just my stupidity in forgetting that in English language, one word can have two meanings. Mm -hmm. We're going to discuss that just a tad bit more in a second. Uh, he also got contacted by a diver who uh, recovered one of the bottles from the John Nash Company while diving in the Atlantic, wow. saw my YouTube video and uh, showed him the bottle. So there's the bottle. How cool is that? It's a pretty cool story. That's um, and so cool. I got on to, yeah, I got onto him because he didn't put the video up. So here's a link to the video in the questions if you want to go check that out. Now, Chris Ferriello, let mm -hmm. me see if I can pull this up. Did he link me right to the right one? Yes. Okay, so Chris is we'll upvote Chris, even though you know you really don't want to upvote Chris, but we'll upvote him anywhere. <laughs> Anyway, uh, my most embarrassing thing was not just marking myself as deceased on this site in 2017. <laughs> yes, That's pretty embarrassing. The dead. Yeah, it happened in 2006 when I registered on Ancestry and when I built the tree up, it went all the way back to this Grimbaldus Dubacon profile I see Mags manages. Um, it auto added the branch all the way back there and then I found the truth. I deleted that mess so fast. Woo, Chris Ferriello. You know what? I don't connect all the way back to them either. You know why? Why is that? Because there's a guy named Gustav Anjou who did my bacon family. But mm -hmm. somebody, uh, I'm trying to remember who it was, here on Wikitree, they were going through the leaders' links to make sure the leaders' stuff was good. And he mm -hmm. said, you have a big mistake in your family tree. And I'm like, oh, no, which one? He said, the bacon line. I'm like, the bacon's, oh, no. <laughs> And he, he got the proof that the guy that I thought was my earliest known ancestor here in the U.S., the guy that had that Gustav Anjou had connected him as father actually says in his will, I did not have any children. Oh, well, oh. that's clear. You can't get any more black and white than that. That's so my bacons pretty... are dangly. <laughs> I have dangly <laughs> bacons. Dangly bacons. 
Um, so, so that's they're the bacon question. bits. Yeah, no bacon bits. Uh, <laughs> so people were talking about making mistakes in spelling, following mm. the completely wrong line just because all the names line up. Mm -hmm. And this was a Thomas line. Uh, accepting other online trees was a huge mistake other people mm -hmm. did. And I'm not saying that Wikitree is perfect, but we do work on accuracy. So, I mean, even if you're on Wikitree and you're connecting to a line, I always go through and vet the sources that I find on Wikitree because that's what a good genealogist does. I'm not saying I'm a good genealogist. I'm just saying that's what you should do if you <laughs> want to be a good genealogist. Um, Another big mistake that people, and this should be a what, what is your biggest regret question, mm -hmm. not talking to the older generation and finding mm -hmm. out the information that they have. Um, let me just run through here. Let's see. Oh, Thomas Jefferson Hester was a good thing. The whole family believed they were related to Thomas Jefferson. Well, they were, but it was Thomas Jefferson Hester not the Thomas Jefferson, mm -hmm. not following directions, don't make assumptions. Um, one person even published a family history and then mm -hmm. found out she had, she had misspelled the name from trying to translate it from a text. Mm -hmm. And it was actually a J instead of an S or something. Mm -hmm. um, and Wikitree duplicates, that's it. That's the question of the week. But I'm bumped. <laughs> Good stuff. Excellent. Hey, excellent. Way to go, Betsy. Betsy yeah. Did you have something you wanted to say to us? Yes. So, as we segue into Greg's seg um, segment, a profile of the uh, profiles of the week, which are all related to the theme of rabbits, um, and this is to do with the that it is the year of the rabbit in the Chinese zodiac. I wanted to ask. Just curious. I'm putting in the chat right now the years when rabbits were born. And so um, if, if someone in the chat is a rabbit, let us know. If you're watching the video later, put a comment in. in okay, not uh, only. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. No, and Greg, can I tell them? Not only you is can. Greg a rabbit because he was born in one of the years, I, I discovered on our travels to Roots Tech. That he yes. is also the energizer rabbit. Oh my <laughs> god, this guy goes and goes and goes and goes. I had to sleep for three days when I got home for having traveled with the man. And look what I got. Oh. I, just this one. I just covered this up. Oh. And then I've got a really cool Mags Wiki Tree mug. Yeah, that's right. That's it, and if I uncover it, I have a, an older version of the live cast crew nice okay. <laughs> very good yeah open season on rabbits and rabbit hole. <laughs> that's right yeah uh there we go Be it's really <laughs> now they're really going nuts um so before i start this though there was a question in the chat though what happened to the last uh live cast on roots tech because there was a, a Roots Tech live cast schedule for 2.30 every single day, but we did a full live cast from the Roots Tech booth at 10 o'clock uh, Roots Tech time, mountain time. Um, and so we had basically had said everything we had to say. And when it was 2.30, the expo hall was closing at three. Some people were already starting to take things down and it was kind of sad. And, you know, we had nothing left. We had nothing left to give. Now, in retrospect, I should have gone online on my laptop and just said, hi, we're here. We're leaving. You know, it was great. But it was packed. What's, what's that? But it was packed up. Exactly. Packed Someone up. had already packed it up. And they said, here's, your, were na packing here's like crazy. your knapsack. Get it out of the way while before, so we can get ready to take things down. So, but I mean, we should have done that. At least it would have brought some closure to all those people who, you know, looked at the schedule that was there. And uh, so we apologize for not showing up. And we said, we Judy, were. Judy Stutz said, but we waited. I know you did. And I feel bad. And I, I, we got, you know, we, the expo hall ended theoretically at three. I think it was, it was around four by the time we had everything packed up and we're back at the hotel. And then, you know, I hope, I don't know why I opened up and there's the mail and there, there was a message from discord. Uh, Here's the long and the short of it, Greg. They had fun without us. They don't, need I know us. they must've, that's good. I'm glad there we go. So there you, you don't need us. You don't need us. Okay. But, 
it is the year of the rabbit. And I do have a funeral that I have to take off and play the uh, organ for. So let us get through, let us get to this. Uh, let me make this a little bit bigger, put my cursor on the right screen. Oh, wait a second. What did you do? You disconnected me. Or did I disconnect me? There we go. I could have done that. Okay, which rabbit are you most closely related, connected to? So, um, and I want to know if you want to do it just as fast as Mel Bonk. <laughs> uh, I'll try. I, no, I probably can't. <laughs> That's all, folks. Uh, the first one, the uh, the profile of the week, the the central one is Melvin Jerome Blanc, Blanc or Blanc, as he went by later in life, um, because <laughs> he actually changed his name because of a comment one of his teachers gave. Uh, I know that neither Betsy nor I would give a, neg a comment like that to a student, or at least. Um, so he was born 30th of May, 1908 in San Francisco, California, a son of Frederick Harvey Blank and Eva Katz, and, uh, father of Noel Blanc. Uh, he died July, uh, July 10th, 1989, at the age of 81 in Los Angeles. Voice actor, radio personality, best known, of course, for his work with Warner Brothers is the rascally wabbit Bugs Bunny. He also did the voices for Daffy Duck, Porky Pig, Tweety, Tweety Bird. I didn't know about Tweety Bird. Uh, and he's often referred to as the man of a thousand voices. He was born, born Melvin Jerome Blank. Um, but a teacher influenced his name by remarking how he'd never amount to much with a last name like Blank. So he changed it to Blanc, um, a French sounding name, and, which means white, which is interesting. Um, Anyways, at the age of 19, this is interesting, and Betsy will appreciate this, he became the youngest orchestra conductor in the country. Wow, what orchestra? Uh, it, okay. uh, when he was working for, working in vaudeville shows. It doesn't say which orchestra. Yeah. Um, and he that was acting on the KGW show, The Hoot Owls. Never heard of that. So he was soon... He's soon back in Los Angeles, so I don't know if that means the orchestra wasn't in Los Angeles and moved afterwards, mm -hmm. but... Um, and then as he joined Warner Brothers in the golden age of radio, and radio was king. He married Estelle Rosenbaum, and they remained married until his death. He passed away from complications because of his pack-a-day smoking habit, mm. uh, and thus emphysema and coronary heart disease. Now, if he's a voice actor, like, this is your instrument. You know, you'd think that smoking once, you know, a pack-a-day is probably not a good thing, unless that gives your voice, your your vocal cords, that timbre or that, you know, mm -hmm. unusual quality or something. I don't know, but any anyway, interesting. The next uh, bunny rabbit is uh, Bunny Brook, um, who was uh, known as she was an Australian actress, creator, producer, director, design, playwright, and casting agent, best known as Flo Patterson in the long running Australian soap opera, number 96. So the, the profiles of the week go back and forth between things that have to do with rabbits or people called rabbit or bunny in this case. I think we have these two bunnies, um, people named bunny or nicknamed bunny. She was raised by her, um, by her aunt and uncle after her parents divorced, um, married Leonard Norman Brooks in Victoria, Australia and had two children. She became a mime artist and had started under Marcel Marceau. Oh, wow. Oh. Um, and I will mime the rest of the profiles. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see that. <laughs> yeah, that would be funny. Yeah, I don't know any ASL, so there's no, you know, it, it would be, it wouldn't be very good. Uh, it would be just as informative as our, as our final live cast from Roots Tech. <laughs> uh, she also starred as Nell in Round the Twist, which was an Australian children's show. Uh, and this is interesting. I hadn't seen this before, but the person who created the profile added their own little personal memory as the last paragraph there. Um, but they didn't sign their name. So, oh, wait a second. No, that's the name. Is that Sharon? Sharon Belithon Nankervis is the profile writer, maybe. Makes sense. Anyways, I thought that was interesting. Um, passed away in the 2000, 2nd of April. Then Hendricus Magdalenus Bruna, uh, or Dick Bruna. Uh, the Dutch author, illustrator, and graphic designer, widely acclaimed for his work, is the creator of the popular children's book series, Miffy. Um, now, I haven't heard of Miffy. Have you guys heard of Miffy? Miffy is a rabbit. There's him with a stuffed version of Miffy. Uh, he was born on August 23rd, 1927, Utrecht, the Netherlands. 
uh, initially started to pursue a career in drawing before his father forced him to attend a secondary school. So I guess his drawing was early on. <laughs> they said, you, you go to high school. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he eventually attended the Artibus Art School in Utrecht, uh, where he studied design and illustration. Uh, he worked for a publishing company uh, that was founded by his grandfather. So that's kind of cool. Um, and then he created this, this um, there we go, pointing in the right direction, uh, Rabbit Miffy, which is sort of minimalist in design and sold over uh, 85 million copies worldwide. You know, my dad wanted to be a cartoonist. Oh, neat. And he got um, a free ride to go to Clemson because of his grades. And so he, he started, they didn't have art, so he studied architecture instead. Uh, Isn't that funny? Because that was next alphabetically? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> you could study art at during architecture. Right. Well, yeah. there is a lot of connections there. Isn't that a funny yeah. story? That is neat. Uh, lots of awards for uh, Dick. Um, so, um, Golden Book, Golden Brush Award, the Silver Pencil Award. That's kind of cool. He, uh, knighthood from Queen Beatrix of the <laughs> Netherlands. Um, a, a nice legacy. That's fine. Thornton Waldo Burgess from 1874 to 1965. Nickname, the Bedtime Story Man. <laughs> you are 21 from him. Yeah. Right? And He's my and cousin, five right. times removed, apparently. Um, Thor Thornton Burgess was a uh, children's author and conservationist. Um, he wrote lots of stuff, uh, 170 books, 170, wow. 15,000 oh, okay. stories for his daily uh, newspaper column, Bedtime Stories, hence the nickname. And his books included Peter Cottontail and Peter Rabbit. The Adventures of Peter Cottontail. So hence the, the rabbit connection. Uh, son of Caroline Francis Hayward and Thornton Waldus Burgess Jr. Or Sr., I should say. Um, his wife gave uh, died giving birth to their only son, Thornton. Uh, and then he married a, a widow who had two children of her own from her previous marriage. Uh, he, he liked to be outside and he set his plot for his stories outside. Um, some of the characters, Old Mother West Wind, um, Peter Cottonhill, Jimmy Skunk, Sammy Jay, Bobby Raccoon, Little Joe Otter, Grandfather Frog, Billy Mink, Jerry Muskrat, Spotty the Turtle, uh, Old Mother Wind, and her Merry Little Breezes. So, uh, his books have been published in lots of different languages. Passed away on the 5th of June, 1965. Okay. And then we have Charles Litvijiga uh, Dodgson, who is again as a cousin. Oh. Um, and, uh, let's see, he's a renowned author, author better known, <laughs> but he's better known by his care, his name, Lewis Carroll. He's the oldest son and third of uh, 11 children born to Reverend Charles Dodgson, who is the perpetual curate of Dar Darsby Cheshire. Uh, the perpetual curate, curate? I guess. <laughs> that means you're never allowed to retire. You're just perpetually the curate of that church. Interesting. Um, at age 12, he was sent to Richmond School, where he thrived and did well in math. And at age 14, went to rugby school. <laughs> the institution, he said, uh, he did say that any early earthly considerations would nowhere, no, no earthly consideration would induce me to go through my three years again. So I guess ah. it was not a good experience. No. Uh, he got a BA, first class honors in mathematics, and then he was named sub librarian of Christchurch Library, got an MA degree. So this this guy could actually fit in next week's profiles. Yes. Next week's profiles of the week are all about mathematicians because we celebrate Pi Day next week, and we'll mm -hmm. talk about more about that later. But so this guy could bridge the gap there. But of course, um, he liked to tell stories uh, to his three young daughters or uh, the daughters, not his daughters, because he was almost, um, he was almost a priest, um, but he didn't, he never did take the holy orders, but he w became a deacon. He came close, but he never quite wanted to make that leap. Um, but he did have a, a friend, Henry Liddell, who was the dean of the college, who did have the three young daughters, one of them being Alice. And so he told these stories to Alice. Um, and uh, so Alice in Wonderland, Through the Looking Glass and all that sort of stuff. Apparently, he was even read, um, he was even a favorite of Queen Victoria's. 
the uh the uh people in our chat who are our wonderful collaborators have given you uh day melon the first perpetual curate appointed to the church but got paid money for expenses rather than a proper salary really so that sounds like a um a way to get hooked up to do work, but get paid as little as possible for there it. There you go. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a church. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, next one. David Alexander Colville, Canadian Connection. Woo Yay. Uh, born the 24th of August, 1920 in Toronto, Ontario. Uh, son of David Harrow Colville and Florence Colville. Um, just look at my time. Um, and father of Graham and John, uh, passed away uh, just 10 years ago, um, July 16th, 2013, at the age of 92 in Wolfville, Nova Scotia. He's a painter, a war artist, and a designer of images on the Canadian 1867 and 1967 Memorial Canadian set. So Canada was 100 years old in 1967, and there was a huge centenary and centennial celebration. Um, and one of the parts of that was they had commemorative stamps, they had commemorative coins. Uh, they commemorated. We got our flag. The there was a flag. flag. Yeah. yeah. There was even a commemorative song by Bobby Jimby. Now, do either of you two? Now, you, Betsy probably doesn't know Bobby Jimby, and Mags, you weren't in Canada yet. So, there was a there was a song that he actually wrote called, um, and it was Canada, one little, two little, three Canadians, we love you. Boop, boop, boop. Anyways. We learned it in school. Now, I wasn't in school in 1967. I was still preschool, very preschool. Um, but we still learned it when I got to school. It was a, it gave and gave and gave that song. Anyways, okay. but what he, Alex did was he designed the coin set, the commemorative coin set. And on the coin set, there was a rabbit on the nickel. <laughs> I was waiting for that connection. <laughs> There's the connection. He designed the rabbit on the five cent coin. So, you know, we may have stretched, you know, the connection, but, you know, it's a connection. It's a valid connection. And I think the only Canadian one, this one. <laughs> um, there's one of the posters he designed for the war, but they don't show the nickel. Why don't they show the rabbit? Oh, well, if someone has that commemorative set at home, upload the image of the rabbit to this profile, please. I implore you. Um, but we move on. Uh, another bunny. Bunny DeBarge, also known as Jordan and Knight, um, daughter of Robert Louis DeBarge and Etterline DeBarge. Uh, she was American soul singer, songwriter, and the lone female sibling of the Motown family group DeBarge. Um, she's the eldest of 10 children, and she and her brothers grew up singing gospel music in the Bethel Pentecostal Church in Grand Rapids, Michigan, where an uncle was the pastor and another uncle was head of the choir. So um, she married Anthony Tony Jordan in Jefferson County, Ohio, when she was 20. They later divorced after having two kids. Um, they initially sang together in the gospel circuit, God's Children of Harmony, before the brothers joined with the group and signed contracts to record with Motown. Um, top black, uh, top chart with a single Time Will Reveal. I'm not sure. I didn't, I'm not familiar with that one. But it was on the top 20. Uh, in the pop charts. And after several successful albums, her brother decided to go solo. Bunny released a solo album, and then the siblings followed individual pursuits. There we go. Another bunny. Then we have Ruth Sawyer Durand, um, daughter of Francis Milton Sawyer and Ethelinda Jane Sawyer. Uh, storyteller and writer of fiction and nonfiction for children and adults, 1937 Newbery Medal Awardee, and the 1965 Laura Ingalls Wilder Award recipient mm -hmm. for Lifetime Achievement in Children's Literature. Um, she was an author. She was called a storyteller with consummate gifts, whose tales, both oral and written, should be characterized as living folk art. That's pretty good praise. Um, books included The Primrose Ring. She had a silent film that starred Mae Murray. And uh, The Way to Christmas, she published a book. And uh, one of her first juvenile fiction books was, and here's the connection, The Tale of the Enchanted Bunnies. There we go. Three. Okay. Junius Conyers Matthews. He is my closest. Is he? At mm. 17. Wow. 21. 
So who's Betsy's closest? We haven't even told us that one yet. Durand. Ruth Durand. Oh, the one we just did. I, I had yep. a tie. I had a tie. Also Thornton Burgess. Yep. Yeah. Mm, there we go. Sorry, Betsy. <laughs> so Junius Matthews was an American actor, radio performer, original voice of Rabbit in Disney's Winnie the Pooh. So that's neat. Um, he also voiced Scotty in 100, and I don't know that one, but he, 100, uh, oh, in the 101 Dalmatians. I'm not sure which one's Scotty, but he was the owl, Archimedes, in the Sword in the Stone mm. Disney movie. Uh, he was born in 1899 in Carthage, Illinois. Got a start on Broadway. And uh, actually, it looks like he did lots of words. He, um, one of his earliest, earliest radio roles was as the Tin Woodsman in a production of The Wizard of Oz. Uh, and he also was on a CBC radio show and a number of others. He was in the army for a bit, so he had a bit of a break in his career, and then he appeared in a few movies as well. Suffered a stroke which uh, in 77 and then passed away in 78 of natural causes. Beatrix Potter is our second last one. Uh, Helen Beatrix Helis, formerly Potter. Daughter of Rupert William Potter and Helen Beatrix Leach. Um, author, illustrator, natural scientist, and conservationist. Best known for imaginative children books, children's books featuring animals such as those of the tale of Peter Rabbit, which celebrated the British landscape and the country life. Um, she was the daughter and firstborn child of her parents, Rupert and Helen. Um, during her childhood, she really saw her brother, who attended boarding school and had very little contact with children of her own age. So hence, she was drawn into her own world and began drawing animals. Here comes Peter Cottontail, yeah, hopping right. down the money trail. <laughs> so now, Peter Cottontail, I think, is the one who was created by Burgess, the, one, the previous quota profile. But this one, Peter Rabbit, is the one that she's done. Uh, but she's got Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. Oh, there's a Cottontail there, too. So, yep. you know, who was, who was the song written for? Maybe I, I have to ask my grandmother because she's the one who sang it. Yeah. Now, we bought <laughs> all these. Unfortunately, I don't these... have a seance planned. Yeah, no seance. No seance. Yeah. We had um, we bought all these books for our kids when they were young. Um, I got to tell you, some of them don't stand up to the test of time. Mm. They uh, There's some... Some of the writing, some of the descriptions of people and things are a little dated. <laughs> um, and yet there's still, you know, there's still some good stuff there too. So, you know, and the illustrations are amazing. Um, so Burgess renamed Peter Cottontail as Peter Rabbit, according to the bio. Ooh. Ooh. Interesting. So I guess Beatrix Potter has Peter Cottontail. There we go. Mm -hmm. hey. uh, she had a very interesting life. Um, the... The profile here talks a bit about it, but there's been movies made about her, her life and, and stuff. So pretty neat. Anyway, probably one of the most famous bunnies and rabbits. And last one, Jimmy Stewart, James Maitland Stewart. And we have had his profile before. I'm, 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 I know we have had him. Mm -hmm. We've talked about him. He, uh, great man, uh, family man. And the pro this is a really well done profile. It's got nice, lots of pictures, snippets. Um, and it talks all about different aspects of his life is, you know, what a great family man he was. He was an actor and a soldier, which I remember the first time we did this, I didn't realize I only knew about him as a, you know, as an actor and stuff. But he also uh, did quite a bit during the war. Uh, I don't remember the part about a dog named Bo in his thing before. But of course, the connection is uh, one of his one of his films was about Harvey the rabbit. Right. And. But the rabbit, we never actually saw the rabbit, did we? Yeah, we did. We did? We did. He, they, they, at the very end, I think we saw the rabbit. The very oh, end did of the we? movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> Unless yeah. I just conjured him out of my psyche. I don't think I don't I've know. actually seen that movie. I mean, I've heard about oh, it. About this yeah. invisible rabbit that he talks to or whatever. But anyways. Um, wow. Great man. Great profile. Yes. Harvey the rabbit is the connection. And with that... You're 23 I, from him, Betsy. Okay. Very cool. Thanks. I think I need to bid you adieu and okay. get on my way. And anyways, have I will a, catch uh, up on the... Have a good have Saturday. A, I'll, yeah, yeah, I'll have a good Saturday. Yes. You too as well. Ciao, everyone in the, in the chat. And I'll talk to you later.
All right. Thanks, Craig. Bye. No Bye. And then there were two. <laughs> what is a puka? Somebody look up puka. What is a puka? Wasn't Harvey a puka, the big rabbit? All right. Everybody's saying bye to Greg. Betsy. Yeah. All right. It. So we we actually, we should have led with this, that today, March 11th, is Genealogy Day. And in, yes, in, in honor of that, um, we had a thread in G2G that Sandy Paddock put up um, asking for show and tell submissions of um, things that have been passed down from your ancestors that are meaningful. And uh, we have some amazing photos from this thread. So I am going to um, take us there. Um, oh, I already took us there. Great. Okay. Um, but I'm going to make it a little bigger. But that might be too big. Okay, um, so we have, I think th these are from Janine Eiselman. Yes, um, these are things, uh, let's see, a coffee grinder that belonged yep, to- we had one of those. A great grandmother. Very cool. Where did the coffee go, in the little drawer or- yeah, it go, you put it in the top and it goes down and comes out in a little drawer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some knives that her father made. Really gorgeous. I wonder if these are. Is Janine in, is Janine in the chat? I thought I yeah, saw. Yeah, I thought she was. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, these look like ivory. Um, and then a cabin that her father and younger brother made. Um, and she, it looks like, it looks like a, wish there was something to scale it with. Um, there was also furniture made to go in it, kitchen table, chairs, beds, cabinets, etc. So she's here. Yeah. If you tell tell us more, Mags will will put it up. Um, now next we have um, who's this from? Margaret Meredith, a bedspread that. Um, Lucinda James crocheted for her parents as a wedding gift, 1950. Um, oh, okay. It was by crocheted by her aunt and it was used throughout the years at bridal luncheons, birthdays, other celebrations. And she has it uh, now and hopes to give, pass it on to her children as a wedding gift. It's really beautiful. Um, now these are from Sandy. Um, this is a door, a doorknob to the side kitchen door of her grandparents' house in West Virginia, and she she uh, said that right as the house was about to be torn down, she she secured the doorknob about six months. She before. secured it. She you secured know, it. Sandy, those old <laughs> houses. One of the things that those kids loved to play with were marbles. And if you look around the doors where people went up the steps into the houses, if you look around yeah. and dig just a little bit, you will find marbles. Huh. Oh. Because people were reaching in their pockets to, to right. open the door and they would drop their mar marbles. <laughs> Unlike never... me, you lost your marbles. <laughs> and... Look, uh, Janine says that those knives are wooden. Oh, really? Uh, Okay. Yeah, he had a wood shop, so he made wood nines. Really beautiful craftsmanship. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then this is um, Sandy's wedding dress from 1958. Oh, wow. Yes. Um, the, the family. Met mother's Sandy. wedding dress. Sandy's mother's wedding dress. Yeah. 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 Um, and she's, she, there's, there are comments back and forth about how to preserve the, the dress. She doesn't dare fold it up because, you know, but it's just, oh, I love the lace work. Yeah. The That's, lace work's gorgeous. Yeah. How, how beautiful. Um, okay. Then we have a quilt. What would genealogy show and tell day be without a quilt? 
Really? Um, <laughs> guessing uh, that this was made in the 1890s, judging by the fabrics in the patches. Um, and I, I thought this was, this is really interesting. So who, wait, who posted this? Oh my gosh, that's blood. That's blood. She worked hard on this quilt, often pricking her fingers, but kept working. Let's see. It was made by Shelley's third great grandmother, Lucinda. Burton. DNA. DNA. Yes. Yeah. DNA. <laughs> Someone tell <laughs> Shelley. Yes. Um, but look at this. This is so cool. There's this this chain of custody of everybody who had who is own the own the quilt. Isn't that amazing? Jeannie Elijah, I wish I could uh, blow it up. Maybe I if I went to her profile, maybe I could, but um that's just really special to have that. Um <clears throat> okay. Then Donald Spanner. Uh, posted this photo of his great grandfather Henry Venn was a military outfitter and and clothier. Um, so this is one of the hats he made. I see. Is a that nine. a bugler's hat? <clears throat> because yeah, does. yeah, and I see a ninety. Um, yeah. I, I don't know anything more than 1856 to 1913. That's gorgeous. Yes. Yeah. And, and amazing that it's still so, you know, shiny, the, you know, the, yeah. the gold details. Yeah. Okay. This is a full double sized bedspread. <laughs> it is not an anti -mac anti macassar, which I want everybody to know. I looked up and practiced pronouncing. <laughs> <laughs> because I, uh, I, I didn't, I wasn't really familiar with that word. Um, Annie Macassars are, are what, uh, the fabric that would go over the back or arms of a, a an armchair. So gotcha. um, I'm glad that um, Anonymous Hamilton clarified that because it does, it does, you can't really tell from the scale on the photo how big it is. But notice that there are names and dates along. <gasps> Nice. Yes. So let's see. Um, and Marianne Doyle uh, crocheted it, and her name is across the top. And she married R. Kerr, and his name is crocheted going up the left side. And then on the right side going up is crocheted the year 1867, which might be the year they met or became betrothed. And the finding of Moses is crocheted on the bottom and describes the picture. You know, Jelaine Smith just asked, how do you yeah. create a source citation for that? Mm -hmm. We actually did a live cast with Roberta Estes, who, if you don't know, besides genealogy, she is a quilter extraordinaire. And she came on, shared some of the quilts that she had made and showed us how you can do um, the quilt square with the information about who quilted it, who the quilt was for, the date, and all of that stuff. And we actually talked about how to source quilts uh, for genealogical wow. records. So do look for Roberta Estes in one of the live casts, and you'll find that answer there, Jelaine. Yeah. Wow, that's fascinating. Um, okay. Now, this is from Keith Cook. Um, and his great grandfather, Carl Gustav Herbert Lauren, was a stonecutter uh, who came with his wife to the United States from Sweden in 1881. And he carved this marble frame for his youngest son, Sven, who uh, later became ordained into the ministry of the United Methodist Church in 1937. Nice. Yeah. Um, here we have. Bill Baker's grandfather's pipe, match case, and tobacco tin. Oh, I wish I could see. There looks like there's some really beautiful engraving on the um, on the tobacco tin. Actually, nice the pipe is gorgeous too. Yeah. And everybody in the in the comments, people were were wondering if these were the original matches, <laughs> but they are not. They. Uh, <laughs> Bill put them in there to show the purpose of what, what it was. But, nice. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, this is from Sally Kimball, a little um, glass knickknack, a souvenir of Leonidas, Michigan. And uh, from her father's side of the family. And so there was conversation here about how does how does a little town like this end up with you know souvenirs and um, she she writes perhaps an enterprising shopkeeper thought it a good joke um, to since even today this is a tiny town last time I was there oh, it had cute. one flashing traffic light <laughs> <clears throat> not exactly a vacation spot but no. um, so. Yeah, so, and someone comments, uh, you know, that shop owners could order souvenirs to sell that had their town yep. or whatever. So, <laughs> dinner forks uh, that belong to, oh, uh, Kay Knight's great grandmother. And you can nice. see that, that her name was engraved on the back. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah, they. They really are. Um, a oh, now this is pretty cool. A one sixth dollar bill. Who is this? Was from David Wilcox, uh, and it was payment to his four times great grandfather for his service in the Battle of White Plains, New York, seventeen seventy six. Wow! Wow! Yeah. yeah, I can't believe that's not under glass. <laughs> um, I, I can't, I, some of the money for Moses Fitch for his service during the revolution, he was wounded at the battle of white plains, New York, October 28th, 1776. Yeah. So, um, and, uh, yeah, I didn't know there was such a thing as a one six dollar bill. Uh, this cameo. Uh, has been in Marianne Cerruti's family since 1852, six generations. Wow. Uh, yeah. Uh, Margaret Stilwell received it from her husband as a wedding present. They were married in 1852. And she has photos of each generation of women wearing the pin. Oh, all, wow. All posted on WikiTree. Wow. Yeah. And what um, what was came out in the, the comments is that they thought that her mother had skipped, that it had skipped her generation, but then they found this photo. Is that because your mother jumped in a boat with her fiance and went to Miami for, um, to, what do you call that when you go, um, ah, elope. Elope. <laughs> they eloped. Ah, the, your, your mother is beautiful. Yeah, that's bigger than I thought it would be, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. The Kane Collection. So this was from David Draper. And he um, said that it was his grandfather's collection. Um, well, that's what he was told. But it was not. He discovered by researching that this collection of canes was his great grandfather's collection. It's actually twice as big as what you see in this picture. And is that a milk jug that it's in? A ceramic milk jug. Um, you that know, would be a collectible too. Yeah, I I had I read everything. I don't think any mention was made of the container, so I don't know. That's a question for David. Um, so he said, as pioneers migrated westward, they stopped to refresh supplies in the southeast corner of Nebraska, Dawson, Nebraska. Today, they traded what they had for supplies, and his great-grandfather accepted canes for payment. These canes came from all over Europe. Each wow. had a story. Wow. His great-grandfather knew the story behind each cane. And of course... Regretfully, nobody ever wrote those down. David also <laughs> says that when I was a boy, I used them as ball, ball bats to hit rocks out into the field. Ooh. I destroyed some really valuable canes, hand carved with intricate details. The rest are scattered about in all the families, and they don't realize the historical <laughs> significance. Free space page. Free space, free space page. page. Yes. <laughs> This collection is at now at the home of his nephew, who has no idea about the story behind the canes. Now he does. That's that's really yeah. Donna Gerber agrees that that looks like a croc. 
that they're in. That, that, yeah. that looks like something collectible as well to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. My Ooh. Dorothy Neilfield. Uh, no, the, I'm sorry. Nancy Wilson. Uh, this is my grandmother's table from her living room. Every Christmas, she would put a small silver Christmas tree on this table. She died in 1969. Decades later, this was among her possessions that were auctioned off to pay for another family member's medical bills. This was the only thing I remembered that I wanted from that auction, and it now sits in her reading room. Nice. Beautiful. Uh, okay, this is Sue Carta. Uh, these were the wedding rings of my second great-grandmother. When I took this photo, I just realized that the jewelry box they were saved in is actually a prescription medication container. <laughs> Interesting. And, and the prescription's actually written on the, the, the container. So collectibles, not just the items themselves, but yes. the item containers. Yes. <laughs> Charles A. McKean Druggist in Wood, Woodstock NB. And can you make that out, Meg? I can't. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. This one's for me. This is a ceremonial baton Ooh. presented to Ruth Jowett's grandfather in 1955 from the Kingston upon Hull Opera Society. Uh, and the baton is inscribed. Um, it's too it's too big to be used to conduct. Uh, and I don't yet know what the occasion was when it was presented. So, um, now these, Mike, Mike Paddock, um, says his great grandfather, Lorenz Paddock, emigrated from Austria in 1911, was a barber. And he brought his tools with him so that he could work and save money to bring his wife and daughter along. Uh, after his family arrived and grew, he started the Lorenz Paddock Barber, Bever Barber Beverages, Billiards, and Confectionery. Easy for you to say. <laughs> in the small town of Stacy, Minnesota. A haircut, a beer, and pool all in one place. Wish they had places like that now. He also upgraded his equipment to electric. Wow. I love, I love that. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, let's see. This is, who's this from? Rob. I don't know if you've noticed, but people on the chat have noticed that somebody is out on the street blowing their horn. And, and the story we have here is, uh, from John Tyner that somebody who is listening is tooting their approval. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry about that. I, I always, no, forget. no, don't be, it's fun. It's horn tooting. Yay. Betsy go. You, you know, you don't even need to do the sound effects during. Oh, no, Betsy go, go. <laughs> yeah. Life in the big city. <laughs> I just to tune it out at this point. Um, I, I think, I think this is the last one. Uh, this is John, Gw John Jins beans shaving mug actually a soap dish i would say it says he was born march 24th 1791 and died 1883 that's a good long life uh he inherited it when his when his as a teenager when his great uncle died the outside had masking tape on it with my great uncle's name so people assumed it was his i think i was the first to open it in decades and discovered the writing inside wow it always pays to be curious yeah. I asked my mom and then my grandmother who John Bean was. They had no clue. And uh, the idea that I had found something from an unknown ancestor is what really sparked my interest in genealogy. That Love. is really cool. Those are great pictures of the week. Thank you, Sandy. And thank you, uh, Betsy. <clears throat> I have a coverlet that was... Um, that belonged to one of my Dillard great great grandmothers in Dillard, Georgia. I don't know which one, <clears throat> but it was dyed with blueberry or black blueberry, of course, but berry juice, uh, a certain color. So it's actually hanging in a handmade frame that is like grape leaves or leaves from the blueberry bush. 
So the frame we're talking about, the container is just as collectible. So I will take a picture of that if I can do that. It's behind glass. There's mm -hmm. also a note on the back that says a portion of this coverlet is also in a museum in Dillard. So I'll, I'll take a picture of both yes. of those and I'll post that later if I can figure out how to post a picture in G2G. I, I seem to be challenged at doing that. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Um, that I would love to see that. Yeah, I will do that. Thank you, Sandy Paddock. That's great. Yeah. Did you have anything else? Did you have any tips you wanted I, to run? I, have a, I have a quick tip. Uh, I'll, I'll do a two-minute tip. You so, can take three minutes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, and, and I'll just say to everybody, as we finish up um, that segment, happy genealogy day. <laughs> um, okay. Let me go back. Um, so today's tip had to do with um whoops share this tab instead um your navigation page and um I'm, I'm curious maybe people could say in the chat um whether they use this feature or not oh my heart hurts why i see your mama yeah oh mama <laughs> that was her engagement photo that's sweet yeah thanks um so this, um, this is a really useful feature on Wikitree. Um, the, so the way you get to it um, is under my, the My Wikitree uh, menu. And you'll see it's actually bolded um, nav homepage. And I pretty much souped my nav homepage up. Um, so you can see that um, I've got my... my um, my family tree, the, the most immediate generations, um, things that are happening in the G2G discussion feed that have to do with tags I'm following. So if I can, you know, want a quick update and I want to make sure I didn't miss anything, uh, that's where I go. Uh, shows my, my badges. I love my badges. And um, family activity feed. Um, these also show up in um, the, the Wednesday email alerts, but if you want to see in between the, the Wednesdays, you can see them here. And then this, I think this might be my favorite feature of the navigation page, is the scratch pad. And I just use it to, I know some people do um, a free space page for their genealogy to-dos, and that's another great way to, uh, to do it. But I, I really love just, you know, making some quick little uh, to do's here and you edit it that way. Now, if, oh, and, and thank yous. So that's what I have on mine. If I decided I wanted to change that down at the bottom, there is a menu, a uh, hyperlink, and it takes you right to the page. Are you seeing that? I hope you're seeing Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. That's great. Um, where you can customize it, just make it work for you. So really the only thing I don't have is the getting started introduction to Wikitree. Um, uh, but, and by the way, if you're new to Wikitree, I was rereading all this material last night, really great stuff, very valuable um, information. Um, but uh, one, one thing that I could play with is you can um, you know, change the time frames that you're seeing the G2G things, the family feed, the thank yous, et cetera. So that is my tip of the week. Yay. I love your tips of the week. Oh, because thanks. they're, they're, they're simple. They're easy to understand. Even sometimes they, they handle tough and hard to understand tasks and you make them easy to understand. Thank you. Oh, That's so fun. Thanks, Nick. So we're winding down our uh, wiki tree live cast today. Uh, I want to talk about things that are upcoming. Uh, I want to move myself up to the top there. What's happening around? Re oh, that's, easy. that's all folks. Um, <laughs> yeah, what's happening around Wikitree? So let's see. Have we got it? Are we there? Okay, good. Yep, yeah, you're there. So uh, we've got um, the Black Heritage Weekend Sprint is this weekend. So if you're working on that, you want to get... Uh, into that, March 22nd is German Stamish. 
Uh, Friday night date night is March the 24th. I thought it was this past week. So it, it was. It was yesterday. Yeah, two weeks. So, okay, Black Heritage Weekend Sprint, the 24th to the 26th. Uh, Friday night bingo with the angel, the adoption angels project. Woo uh, we've got some bio builders uh, project uh, biography and PGM profiles coming up for challenges. Connect Titanic passengers, connect U.S. Black Heritage project notables, Getty, uh, the integrators and the sources, sorcerers challenge. Uh, we've got the 15 Nations Tour, Argentina, the 15 for 15, the Can Canada Notables Connection, uh, Communiteers, January to March, uh, One Name Study Connecting Challenge for March, the Duggleby one, there you go, U.S. Black Heritage Slave Owner Record Transcription Collaboration. That's a really important one because without having those records transcribed, people can't connect to their to their origins. So that's an important one. Uh, Civil War March Challenge, Andersonville. Andersonville was a uh, Civil War Confederate um, prisoner of war camp. Uh, that's a crazy, uh, interesting. And the Rocker event. Um, do we have any updates on the Rocker event? You know, I uh, the Rockers are working away very with great dedication and zeal. Um, I was going to do an update next week num number update um you know sort of at the halfway point okay yeah great yeah. um and social media if you want to help uh share get the word out uh, we'll zoom down here to today uh the meet our members is guess who janine eiserman hey that starts today brian nash was last week uh of course you're here now in the saturday roundup um We've got photos coming up that are sport and the 52 ancestors is translation. Then this week we have the question of the week come. Wait, that was last week. Okay. So that's, that's it. That's all. Okay. So if you want to help out with the social media, go over to the social media tab, the social media team, and you will do that. We love having all of you here with us. Yes. And uh, we wish you a happy genealogy day and we're going to check out we'll see you soon <laughs> all Next right week. bye y'all everyone bye i gotta get my uh information up here here we go hey.